these sad, evocative ruins are all that is left of the great Britannia Music Hall in Glasgow. They feel like the relics of a vanished civilization, mysterious and incomprehensible to us now. The Britannia was built in 1857 at the height of the British Music Hall boom, and this stage has hosted performances by some of Music Hall's greatest names. Dan Lino, the King's Jester, described as the funniest man on earth. Maury Lloyd, the queen of the halls, notorious for her innuendo, but adored for songs that found laughter in the adversities of working class life. And a 16-year-old Stan Laurel, who made an audience laugh for the first time in this room. In Victorian Britain, the musical was ubiquitous. Every town, every suburb had its version of this space. The period of their heyday was a time of colossal upheaval in British society, and the halls were an authentic, creative response to this rapidly changing world. A hilarious, absurdist, mocking commentary on the life and times of the people in song and laughter. Mass entertainment has been my family business for generations, and I want to trace its evolution back to its earliest roots, I'll be visiting the venues, the warm, bright, welcoming spaces that grew out of our pub culture. Pot houses that became grand palaces where even the king came for a good night out. I'll be rediscovering the performers and their songs. And trying to decipher some Victorian innuendo. Daddy wouldn't buy me a bow-wow. And I just think... They must have been absolutely wonderful, and I just really wish I could have met some of them. They sound absolutely great. I'll be singing the odd verse myself. And finding out just who frequented the halls. A jaunty angle, or about there? Look yeah, at that. that. That's it. absolutely Brilliant. fantastic. So let's have a look at the story of this wonderful institution its stars, its audiences, the politics behind it, and just why it tells us so much about the entertainment we enjoy today. <laughs> 